the practice and realization of no self in person. In this lecture, we will continue to talk about listening, contemplating, and meditation, as well as the four stages of the path of joining. It may overlap with the previous lectures, but it offers a different perspective. You can listen to it from a new perspective. To transform the wisdom of listening into the wisdom of contemplation, we need to experience the three types of suffering, impermanence, and no self in person. This is about practicing and realizing no self in person. The so-called wisdom of contemplation refers to pondering and experiencing the impurity, multiplicity, impermanence, and no self in person of the five aggregates. No self in person means that the five aggregates are not I. Then we should observe and experience in a more subtle way. Furthermore, we should observe and experience the suffering of change as well as the all-pervasive suffering which is characterized by the lack of freedom. The experience and realization gained through contemplation are different from the understanding gained through merely listening. When we say, I have heard these teachings, we have heard and understood them. We may have experienced the teachings to some extent, but the understanding gained through merely listening remains at the conscious level. It is the logical thinking of the sixth consciousness with less experience. When we mindfully experience the suffering of change and the all-pervasive suffering, such experience will flash in our minds. It is stronger than the wisdom of listening, so it is called the wisdom of contemplation. It is the analytical meditation where one pays attention to an object and examines it. In this lecture, we are delving deeper, covering the wisdom of listening and contemplating on the path to liberation, as well as experiencing and realizing the teachings. It's quite effective to experience the teachings during meditation. During meditation, we should try to experience the all-pervasive suffering. You should try to experience what the all-pervasive suffering feels like. When the all-pervasive suffering operates in your mind, can you feel it? Can you feel the lack of freedom driven by karma? You should try to experience it. If you experience it, you will understand, ah, this is the all-pervasive suffering. Those who haven't experienced the suffering of change will regard it as happiness. You need to calm your mind and carefully experience it. When the suffering of change arises, you should maintain an objective attitude and not cling to it. Throughout countless kalpas, our first reaction to the suffering of change is attachment and desire. Now, we shouldn't cling to it. When the suffering of change arises, we shouldn't generate attachment. Instead, we should observe the process of change how the feeling changes, and how the suffering of suffering is alleviated. You should experience the process of alleviation. The feeling is changing, and the suffering of suffering is diminishing. When you are hungry and eating, don't eat in a rough manner, like Zhang Fei. Instead, you should Calm your mind and carefully observe the changing process of your suffering of change. 
That's why it's called the suffering of change. How does it change? How is the suffering alleviated? Besides this alleviation, are there any other feelings? Negative emotions, which are also the suffering of suffering, may be alleviated too. Both the physical and mental sufferings are alleviated. If you don't experience it, you won't be able to cultivate it. You will only have a conceptual understanding. When I expound the suffering of change, how deeply have you experienced it? Without experience, it's impossible to generate renunciation. Therefore, you need to cultivate the wisdom of contemplation, which requires experience. If you don't have the experience, you won't be able to attain the wisdom of contemplation. You will only have the wisdom of listening, thinking, I basically understand the teachings. You will only understand the teachings in a logical manner, without genuine experience. The wisdom of contemplation encompasses experience and realization. Therefore, when one attains the wisdom of contemplation, one will usually generate a firm conviction. So, you should spend more time on meditation practice. Occasionally, you might experience the all-pervasive suffering and the momentary nature of everything. In particular, you should try to experience the subtle impermanence and the momentary nature of everything during meditation. You have learned the teachings on subtle impermanence. However, just listening to it once or twice is not enough. You should take your time to listen and experience it. When your mind is very calm, you may experience that all things are arising and ceasing moment by moment. Nowadays, most practitioners lack the wisdom of contemplation and lack meditation practice. In particular, those who have attended Buddhist academies have acquired much wisdom of listening, but little wisdom of contemplation. They rarely engage in meditation practice. After class, they directly start their daily work. As long as they pass the exams, they are satisfied. They don't spend time contemplating the teachings. Their so-called contemplation is merely an intellectual understanding. In fact, we should take our time to contemplate, examine and experience the teachings in our minds. When we practice the four meditations and eight concentrations and enter the first meditative absorption, we can focus on the object of meditation and examine it, which means contemplating the teachings. In the first meditative absorption, there are attention and examination. If one focuses on the teachings and examines them in the first meditative absorption, the experience is quite profound. This is because with concentration, one can gain a clear insight into the teachings and generate a firm conviction thereby gaining a deep belief without doubts. At this time, one's experience becomes increasingly profound, firm and continuously strengthened and one is close to attaining enlightenment. We can only say close to. These are the four stages of the path of joining. After the path of accumulation is completed, 
One enters the path of joining, which encompasses four stages. These four stages are different from the four preliminary practices imparted in the preliminary practices of the Great Perfection. The four preliminary practices are about cultivating buddhacitta in action. The requirements of the preliminary practices of the Great Perfection are quite high as it starts with the cultivation of buddhacitta in action. The prerequisite is that one has already successfully cultivated buddhacitta in aspiration. It is the four preliminary practices for cultivating buddhacitta in action. It's not just about making aspirations, but about actual actions. It includes 100,000 prostrations, taking refuge, etc. These practices all require actual actions. Moreover, it includes visualizing the objects of refuge and generating buddhacitta, as one needs to connect with the Buddhas and Buddhasattvas. The prerequisite for engaging in these practices is that one has already cultivated a qualified buddhacitta in aspiration. Only after one has cultivated a qualified buddhacitta in aspiration can one practice the four preliminary practices, which include prostrations, repentance through the practice of vajrasattva, mandala offering, etc. These practices are the four preliminary practices for cultivating buddhacitta in action. Different from the four preliminary practices, the four stages of the path of joining refer to the stage of warmth, the stage of summit, the stage of acceptance, and the stage of supreme attribute. To generate a firm conviction of the right view, then familiarize, stabilize, and strengthen it, and finally realize it. It's essential to go through these four stages. They occur before entering the path of seeing. In the journey of spiritual practice, the first stage is the path of accumulation. The second stage is the path of joining, which includes these four substages. And the third stage is the path of seeing. As for the path of seeing, there are the path of seeing in Theravada and the path of seeing in Mahayana. The path of seeing in the Theravada refers to Sotapanna, which is the first stage of awakening. The path of seeing in Mahayana refers to the first Bhumi, which is the first level of Bodhisattva. It usually refers to bodhisattvas of the general teachings. It's not easy to practice the path of joining. During this stage, it's essential to be close to qualified spiritual teachers and never leave spiritual friends and teachers. You must rely on the community of practitioners because at this stage, your view is not stable. After entering the path of joining, you need to strengthen what you have cultivated in the path of accumulation, better observance of the precepts, deeper concentration, and stronger wisdom of emptiness to make your right knowledge and view become increasingly clear. This is the practice of the path of joining, and after completing it, one will attain enlightenment. In the path of accumulation, one needs to develop an initial right understanding. In the path of joining, one needs to practice from the basis of understanding. 
The process from understanding to enlightenment can be roughly divided into four stages. This classification is made by Buddhas and Buddhasattvas, just like placing milestones on a road. No matter if there are milestones or not, the road is the same. In order to make our spiritual journey easier and less prone to going astray, Buddhas and Buddhasattvas placed four milestones on the path. This allows us to progress more smoothly. We can understand the four stages from understanding to enlightenment in this way. The first stage is the stage of warmth. After completing the path of accumulation in Theravada, one has already thoroughly understood the wisdom of no self in person. Then, one will enter the path of joining and start actual practice. The first step is the stage of warmth. During this stage, one starts to meditate on no self in person, generate the sign of warmth and experience no self in person in a similar way. To generate the sign of warmth, many conditions are required. It's similar to the case of rubbing two pieces of wood together to start a fire. You need to prepare the necessary conditions before taking action. Wet wood won't produce fire no matter how hard you rub. If all the necessary merits are accumulated, the sign of warmth will arise. But if you haven't made enough preparations, then no matter how much you practice, you won't generate the sign of warmth. Without the guidance of a teacher, how can you practice? Even if you practice diligently for a lifetime, you would still be like wet wood because you are not prepared. You need to dry the wood and collect some dry kindling. Moreover, you need to have sufficient strength and grasp the correct methods. Then, the sign of warmth will arise. In this case, the guidance of a teacher is indispensable. Some people practice without proper preparation, and as a result, No matter how long they practice, they won't make any progress. Those who have reached the stage of warmth may still regress after reincarnation. After reincarnation, they might regress and even commit negative karma. In special circumstances, if they haven't encountered the Dharma, they may also commit negative karma because they have forgotten. However, it doesn't matter because they will soon start to practice and repent. For those who have reached the stage of warmth, it's easy to find a qualified spiritual teacher because they can easily discern them. It's easy for those who have cultivated the wisdom of no self in person in their past lives to find a qualified teacher. For example, Milarepa, despite living his early life in confusion, found his guru when his karmic conditions were ripe. The second stage is the stage of summit. Among the four roots of virtue, the stage of warmth and the stage of summit are unstable roots of virtue. Those who have reached the stage of summit may also regress and fall into the lower realms after being reborn. Although they possess the wisdom of no self in person, they haven't realized it. The stage of summit is located between the stage of warmth and the stage of acceptance. 
It arises when the roots of virtue in the stage of warmth gradually reach the pinnacle. That's why it's called the stage of summit. The roots of virtue keep growing, just like approaching the summit of a mountain. After the roots of virtue have reached the pinnacle, one reaches the summit, thereby entering the stage of acceptance. In the stage of summit, the roots of virtue are not influenced by wrong views. Hence, the wisdom of no self in person won't be lost and right view can gradually become more stable. Although wrong views may occasionally arise, they can be quickly transformed. This stage is somewhere between progression and regression, like being on the summit of a mountain where there's still a possibility of regression. That's why it's called the stage of summit. The characteristic of the stage of summit is that the roots of virtue are not influenced by wrong views. At this stage, the right view of no self in person is already quite stable, but it's not completely continuous. The next stage is the stage of acceptance. It's also known as the acceptance of the Dharma. At this stage, one has already confirmed the Four Noble Truths. The roots of virtue have become firm and unwavering, so they become continuous. Practitioners who have reached the stage of acceptance won't fall into the lower realms. So, in order to avoid falling into the lower realms, it's not necessary to attain the first stage of awakening. For practitioners who have reached the stage of acceptance, although the wisdom of no self in person is still obscure and similar without direct realization, it's already very stable. Hence, it is called acceptance because it's stable. However, it still involves intentional mental effort and is not completely free from discrimination. It is an analytical wisdom. Since one hasn't attained the fruit of awakening, one still needs to exert mental effort. After one has truly entered the path of seeing, one doesn't need to intentionally direct one's thoughts, but one shall continue to maintain the state of realization. After the path of seeing, it is the path of practice. After seeing the truth, one still needs to practice, but the practice will be free from discrimination and intentional mental effort. The wisdom of no self in person will naturally arise. At that time, there is no attachment at all. Before entering the path of seeing, one still needs to remind oneself of no self in person. Although there is mental effort, the wisdom is already quite stable. Hence, it is called acceptance the wisdom becomes more and more stable, thereby being accepted. The wisdom is maintained and not lost, and the mindfulness is kept. This is the wisdom of practice. People in the stage of warmth and the stage of summit still lack sufficient concentration. Because of this, when the lower realms arise during their meditation, they may still have fear. People in the stage of acceptance have strong concentration. No matter what states arise, they have no fear. 
This is because their right view of no self in person is solid and they will never forget the wisdom of no self in person. No matter what terrifying states arise, they won't have fear because they have mindfulness. Their mindfulness is already continuous, though in a similar way, but at this stage they no longer have fear. Some people, before entering the path of seeing, may pass away in the stage of acceptance. However, it doesn't matter because they will soon enter the path of seeing in their next life. The fourth stage is called the stage of supreme attribute, also known as the highest worldly wisdom, which is the highest wisdom with afflictions. Any wisdom prior to this stage is still mixed with afflictions, such as the four stages of the path of joining, because there is still discrimination and mental effort involved. Among all the worldly wisdom, it is the most supreme. Once the stage of acceptance is completed, one can immediately enter the path of seeing in the next moment. Why does that happen in the next moment? Because the stage of supreme attribute only lasts for one moment. That very moment is called the stage of supreme attribute. After that, one enters the path of seeing. So, the stage of supreme attribute is very short. We don't need to elaborate on the stage of supreme attribute because it only lasts for one moment. In other words, once the stage of acceptance is completed, one enters the path of seeing. After one reaches the stage of acceptance or the stage of supreme attribute, their roots of virtue will be solid and they will never fall into the lower realms. To avoid falling into the lower realms, you don't need to attain the first fruit of awakening. After you have reached the stage of acceptance, you will no longer fall into the lower realms, let alone those who have attained the first fruit of awakening. Those who have reached the stage of summit may still fall into the lower realms. Yet, at the stage of acceptance, the wisdom of no self in person is already continuous though it is the similar wisdom of no self in person. When we practice the four stages of the path of joining, we still rely on intentional mindfulness and the wisdom of discrimination. This stage is crucial. Most practitioners lack practice of this stage. It's not that easy to attain the first stage of awakening. It requires deep concentration. Without concentration, it's impossible to attain it. This is because only in deep concentration can we directly see that the five aggregates are arising and ceasing moment by moment, thereby confirming the absence of a self. Without concentration, one can at most practice at the stage of warmth or the stage of summit. In other words, some individuals may have understood and experienced no self in person to some extent, but it is not stable. After entering the path of seeing, One doesn't need to intentionally direct one's thoughts while meditating on no self in person because they have already directly realized no self in person. When afflictions arise, one can simply bring up mindfulness to transform their thoughts. 
The wisdom of no self in person can directly transform afflictions such as ego and pride, just like pouring hot water onto ice or pouring water onto fire, easily and quickly. After entering the path of seeing, one may still appear as the same person, but their thoughts, actions and how they treat others are completely different from before. Those who haven't entered the path of seeing cannot see the difference. They no longer intentionally engage in virtuous deeds, but are naturally virtuous. They no longer intentionally act in a selfless manner or remind themselves of no self in person, but are naturally selfless. They no longer intentionally let it be, but naturally let it be. Therefore, it's not easy to attain the first stage of awakening. After entering the path of seeing, the conceptual self-attachment is completely eradicated, but the innate self-attachment is still there. One still needs to maintain the state of no self in person in every thought. It takes a long time to progress from the first stage of awakening to the fourth stage. In other words, during the long path of practice, one needs to abide in the state of no self in person. For those who have recently renounced worldly life, you need to accumulate merits and cultivate bodhicitta. After being a monastic for more than 10 years, you should gradually practice concentration. For now, you don't need to rush. Through what we have learned, you should have a clear direction for your practice. Later, we will explain the reasons behind it.